Okay, we are here to do a video review of the new 3D scanning app on Samsung's Note S or Note 10 Plus. So it's new, just got it, and got the 3D scanner app loaded in from the Samsung store and just showing you real quick what this interface looks like. So you can see it says like no subject found and we'll tell you to get closer further away and there's a scan button so pretty simple and what i'm trying to do is take a scan of this new timbuk2 bag but i've had some challenges with it thus far hence my pillow setup here so I'm trying to be generous and show off the best version of this first to show that I am giving it my best honest try. So tell it's moving further away. Now it says it's ready to scan. And then that looks great. That is a surface of a volume that's being scanned real time on the phone. You can see the tracking is very quick and responsive. The scanning feels good. Like the tracking is low latency, feels, you know, interactive with my hand. Um, those blue lines you're seeing, those are the developers trying to tell you that that area hasn't been sealed yet. So that's, blue line is representing the edge of a surface. And if you're not familiar with 3D scanning, uh, kind of how volumetric fusion works, then we read about that, but those blue lines are basically showing you where the edge of the surface is. So, you can see I've done a very good scan of this subject. And we will stop now and let it make a model. So come back over here and show the camera. We are making the model right now. All done, great. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty good. Uh, I can't tell exactly how good the depth is because it's textured. Uh, I'm going to save it and then you will notice my options after saving are screenshot where I can load the object into the world but I don't think I can actually place it. It's just kind of laying it down next to itself which that's fun I guess. And then I can do a video which I think is kind of weird but cool. something? Do anything at all? Are you fighting the screen recorder? Okay, that, that saved itself somehow. And see, there's no way for me to um, turn on like an inspector stuff. So we'll have to send this to Scandy from the iPhone to inspect that model. Um, so I'll show you all the ways that this cannot take a scan of the bag now that I've shown you the only way that I've found that I can take a scan. So you saw me scan it, you know this backside's fine, but it will not start on this. So maybe it wants to scan things on tables and look down. And yeah, that works, but you can see the volume is being automatically placed a certain distance off the camera. And I can't see it or control it, so I don't really know when I'm going to start scanning, which kind of a problem. But from the top, I could get a scan started, and that's part of a backpack. Uh, I figured this side would work since I've got a fair bit of pillow, but no. And so maybe more pillow? No. More pillow? No. So I don't know what the criteria are that it's looking for to do a scan, because it seems a little, a little mysterious. Yeah. So I, I can't get a scan other than the way that I showed you starting on the pillow. And so it's a 
bit of a problem. Um, I'm wondering, you know, maybe it's meant for tabletop scanning. And I'm being rude by standing it upright, but I mean, that's, that's not doing a lot for me either. actually worked. So, doing a pretty good job. Don't blame me, Charlie. Just keep laying right in the middle of where I'm scanning. That's what you're paid to do. Yep. Great work. Alright, so, did get a lay down scan. That's nice. And you notice it didn't lose tracking the entire way around. The tracking on this is really good. We've got some other tests to do to see what kind of tracking it's doing. Whether it is, uh, image-based or depth-based. We have some, some fun tests we can do to check that out. And so, yeah, that's fine. Ready to scan. Oh, look at that. And you might be wondering about why I'm scanning on this glass table, because it should ideally give us the best way to clean up a model afterwards because the bottom is glass and therefore shouldn't ever uh, be scanned. And there should be some good separation between the subject you're scanning and the wood. But, oh, there we went. We went and picked up some glass and thought it was actually there. So that worked pretty well. Not bad. Now, uh, oh, right, uh, I wanted to show some things about how we know this is doing a bounded volume. So in ScanD Pro, this is called scanning V1. And basically, the way that I know that this is happening is because whenever I start scanning, you can see if I come to an edge, there is an edge, and that is the edge of that volume. So you're, if you check out Scanity Pro and you go into v mode, scan mode V1, whenever we're adjusting the size of the bounding box and you can see more and less of the stuff in front of you, that's the version of like Kinfu that they've implemented basically. And I would love to be able to see the depth that it's seen and know where that volume's actually coming in. Because I feel like I can make much better scans. Also, we can take out a tape measure and measure this volume from side to side, but it looks to be about a meter. That would be reasonable. And yeah, boom. I mean, I, I don't love the Poisson approach that every single scan, no matter whether I ask it to or not, it's Poissoning the result, meaning uh, making it watertight and trying to close it all the way around. A typical scan subject of mine, Charlemagne the good boy, only when he's really tired, and dad's been being a jerk for hours. Okay. Right. Good job, Charlemagne. All done. I mean, I don't hate that. I just wish that you hadn't poissoned it. Why do I need this backside? So save. There's this animate thing. So it really wants me to attach a skeleton to this, but I don't know what, how it's gonna work. Uh, I tried to scan myself earlier, or I tried to get my wife to scan me earlier, and it did not come out very well. And, yeah, I, I'm excited that this has this on here, and I'm going to keep playing with it and figure out how to get the best possible scans of things. Uh, again, I'd really like to get a scan of this bag standing up. I was hanging it on the wall earlier, hoping that that would give me a good scan, uh, but alas, it did not. So...
starting to slow down a little bit, so we're going to go ahead and give her give her a restart. Something went wrong and cannot make the model. I don't know what it does not like about this. Hey, we got it started over there. Oh, we lost tracking for a second there. Now the model's all reset. Oof. Yeah, it's fine, dog. You just you just stay right there. <sighs> Something went wrong right as you were finishing the scan. That that hurts. Wish you would just save it instead of discard it. Oh well. We know it's working. Try it again. Yeah. So boom. This reminds me. Oh, boo. This reminds me a lot of our Scandi Pro on Tango in terms of how quick it does tracking. So I, I think it's doing um, some AR AR core inspired tracking. Like there's some image and IMU fusion going on below. It starts tracking depth. So we're going to set up a test for that as best we can. Um, a simple approach is doing something that has very little texture, but some depth, or vice versa. So, move further away. That's 100% IMU tracking because there's no way that depth is going that fast. Or if it is, I'm just going to find a whole bunch of crow and eat it. So, methinks there's definitely visual tracking going on. That's all for the beginning of this video review. We'll have some head-on-head um, -head scans with Scandi Pro soon, and hope you check that out.